Hey guys, today we've got another smaller project, I hope, um, to work on. I've been working on filming little bits and pieces of other videos for you guys. That's why you haven't heard much from me. I was trying to get this project video done, going and picking up this project several hours from home, and lots of other things going on this fall, and then rainy weather, and it was cold, and not good for playing with the projects I had outside. So today, we've got a case 1194 it says but it's really a david brown underneath it's a david brown case 1194. this tractor was basically one of the last of the three cylinder david browns ever produced um, there were never any red 1194s um, ever produced they had dropped that by the time they went to like the red 13 14 15 16 94s. I've seen a couple pictures of 1294s in red, but I'm not sure if they were painted red at the factory or somebody did it after the fact. Um, if you know about that, let me know because I'm curious. Um, this was basically the tractor that was just an updated 880 and then 885, and then they became the 1190 and the 1194. Um, over here in the States, being that most of the little tractors didn't get cabs, um, the 1190 and 1194 are not terribly different. Um, but if they had a cab, the cabs were vastly different. Um, we have some 1394s, and we've had a 1490, and we again have a different 1490, and the cabs on them are very different. Um, but as far as the open station tractors, there's not a whole lot of differences on this particular 1190 and 1194s. These did not use the same power steering pump as the 885s and 880s did. Um, so they are tough to find power steering pump and and the parts to rebuild them. They're just not out there. Because um, he didn't build a ton of these. Somewhere around 8,000, I think, um, between the 1190 and 1194. Maybe less than that, I don't know exactly. Um, I think my brother said he looked it up and it was somewhere around 8,000. But anyway, we have several of these and no, there's actually, they're very popular in this area. I know where several other ones of these are. We have three 1194s and 1190. Um, we got a friend of ours who has an 1194 and I know where two other 1194s are, um, within about an hour here. Um, this tractor was a low ground clearance kind of setup for on a golf course is what we think this one came from. Um, being these have the rotatable final drives, um, you can position them either up or down a position or two to get the tractor to sit how you want. This one when we got it had them actually up so it sat even lower. It kind of had the Carolina squat going on. We said no we can't, can't have that. Um, we tipped it level we ran this one with a three-point hitch backhoe on it for a long time and put a lot of hours on it with that. Not a lot, a lot, but it was our main field tile digging backhoe. We picked it up at an auction, not running, didn't know much about it other than they said it needed a clutch and it didn't run. They were right, it needed a clutch. We did a clutch in it. It ran good. Um, it's had some charging issues and little things, but today it's got other issues. My brother was raking hay with it this summer and he thought he blew it up. It had no power and it was smoking and rattling and clanking. I'll let you guys listen to it and see what you think. They should not sound like that. Three cylinders were maybe not the most smooth tractor. Um, I really enjoy them. They're super handy and nimble, but they weren't necessarily the smoothest running engine, but that is not what they are supposed to sound like. Um, Dad thinks it's just a bent push rod on an exhaust valve. My brother thinks he blew it up. Let's see who's right. Put it down there in the comments what you think's wrong with it. Another cool thing about these is the hoods fold forward so they're easy to work on. When they work, 
and they're not bound up or rusty, they work really, really well. Um, R1190 does not work really, really well. Um, it's a little bit different setup, I think, as far as um, the bolts on it are all rusted out. And so this is loose because you can't tighten them or loosen them. But anyway, this is a good design. As long as they're in working order, they're good. Um, so what we're going to do, I don't know why that's vented into the power steering reservoir. Interesting. Um, I imagine that's how they were, though. Another quick trivia. This cap here. If you were wondering, at least in the States, a windshield washer fluid jug like that over there, or RV antifreeze, will screw in to that. So if you cut one off and use it as a funnel, it's the same thread, which is really cool. I found that out on our 990 when I was changing the oil in it. So we're going to pull the rocker cover off. And uh, I may pull this thing off here. And this is just held on with cotter pins, this little hood brace. So I'm going to pull that off, the airline off and uh, unbolt the rocker cover. And we're gonna see what's inside here. How bad really is it? So on stuff like this, I like to tell you guys the fasteners, if I can, easily without making it, you know, super painful and having a huge long list of whatever size is. These take a half inch wrench. Um, this took a half inch wrench. This breather pipe is actually just gonna pull right up out of the subframe. Um, hose clamps, um, depending on who's been in here before, because that's not factory. Somebody's been in here before. These may be factory, I'm not sure. Um, flathead screwdriver, or it looks like quarter inch socket would work. These tractors, by this point, SAE was pretty calm, and the earlier ones were SAE with a little bit of Whitworth. My Prairie Crop Master over there, which is a 50 or a 51, I'm not exactly sure. Um, it's one of the first year ones, though. It is uh, number nine on the production run of those. It's all Whitworth. My 900 diesel is Whitworth. Um, my 950 diesel I just got actually, which you guys will see later. Um, that was one of my projects I went to go get recently. Um, it's mostly Whitworth, um, but there is some SAE stuff starting to show up on it. By this point, they had metric Whitworth for the fuel lines and some other oddball things. SAE, Whitworth, metric. All of them are hiding in here. Mostly just the sheet metal. Um, I think some of the dash stuff might be metric in there. I don't know. We try not to mess with stuff, you know, back there because it generally is more headache than anything. So, we got our fasteners coming loose. Somebody's been here before because that's not what that's supposed to have. These are all supposed to be little acorn nuts. Yes, we have been in here before because, like I said, it had charging issues. I don't know that we ever had this off, though. I never needed to. Um, the, they weren't very tight, which might be why there's oil, like, everywhere in here. Also, that. That leaks. Um, let me turn my flash on here. Put that focus in there. That doesn't look bad. A little bit of oil residue, but nothing, nothing major. Um, I was hoping it wasn't like the 1370 looked, where it was, like, all coked up with oil and carbon and stuff. I'm gonna get this popped off. Try to snake it around this thermo start here that's not hooked up anymore for one reason or another. And uh, try to get it out of there and I'll see what's hiding in there. Okay, these guys here look all right. Those there look all right. Whoa, buddy. There's the nut. The stud's completely backed out to the point where it actually stopped turning. They've got a little stop in them, so you can't take them too far. And the push rod got so floppy, the cam actually launched it up, and it fell down beside the camshaft. It may not even be bent. Because I thought it was odd if this would bend a push rod, because it had been sitting a little bit. We hadn't used it. Some of our tractors will sit for six months before we need them, because we've got certain tractors that we do certain things with, and we have enough of them, we don't have to unhitch them all the time. Um, so if something's on... A certain piece of machinery it's going to stay there probably so we need it for something else it's going to be a little bit of a tight squeeze to get this out of here um that's definitely our problem though 
and it's an exhaust valve which would make sense why it was puffing and popping out of the intake totally makes sense so if that's what you guys voted for in the comments section that it, it was an exhaust issue for the push rods or something um that was it it's kind of tight it doesn't want to turn either way it's been smacked up against something i would say Hmm. that would definitely do it while we're in here we're going to adjust the, all the rocker arms make sure our valve clearances or valve lash whatever you call it make sure it's all good i'm right off the bat they're feeling pretty good but uh we'll take a look at them so i had to take the screw out to take it out took the screw out and folded this clear down and I was able to wiggle the push rod out of there and <clears throat> to check these there's lots of ways I've seen guys check these um, chuck them up in a drill that's kind of hard to do on this one because it's got that great big ball on the bottom and it's got that big bell trumpet shape on the top it's just hard to get them in there straight to start with so it looked I actually just tried it to drill it was running out like crazy and I'm like it doesn't look that bent so if you got a granite surface plate you can do it on those if you're a machinist or tool and die maker i have one i just don't have it in this shop i have it in a different shop at the moment and for how quick this is going to be um if if you got something pretty flat like we got this cross slide piece on the lathe here i just cleaned up it may look like there's a little bit at this end but it's just that little burr on there um, from making them it looks good to me if you got a good flat surface to work with it doesn't have to be super super precision if the drill thing works for your kind of push rods go for it um, this is pretty well flat I mean that's done on a surface grinder I imagine looks pretty good um, even if you just got a, a short ruler you can lay on the side of it I mean sometimes that's good enough but even if that's not perfectly perfectly straight it's going to be it's going to show you if there's a problem that's bad enough you can't run it because if it's ever so slightly tweaked you can still adjust your valves properly and it will run for a long long time with no issues um, these push rods hold up fairly well i've yet to have an issue with one and i've been through a lot of these engines um, i've done an 880 my 780 i've had a part a couple of times um, you guys saw some of that on YouTube. Um, I've stripped down an 885 motor for parts. I've rebuilt a 885 motor for my uncle. Um, they uh, never really had much trouble with push rods. Um, they're pretty, uh, pretty stout little push rods. They're not like some of the earlier designs where they're like rolled and seam welded or uh, just a thin piece of tube with the ends friction welded on or however they do it brazed on um, they're they're pretty good so I'd, I'd say we're safe to put this one back in after we clean it up but while we're in here and we're looking right at it oh no there's a stink bug in my rocker arms now great get out of there shoe shoe I guess it's not really a stink bug it's one of the big ones we're gonna look down in there and make sure we don't see anything bad Cause I thought at first, well, maybe the cam wiped or something for some reason, but then I thought, eh, kind of unlikely. You guys can't really see it there real good. Um, it doesn't want to focus in on that. There we go. The lifter, it doesn't look bad. It's got oil in it. Um, and it's not all chewed up. So I think we're good to, good to run there. I'll look at it without the camera in the way and just double check, but I'm pretty sure we're all right. Sorry for the noise in the background. The fan you heard earlier and the funny noise you hear now is uh, the grain dryer doing its thing out there. We're drying corn right now. Um, to get this push rod back in here, we're going to have to loosen these up and take the rocker arms off to be able to snake it down in there because it's it might be able to be done, but... I'm not going to risk bending a push rod to attempt to do it. Even though I have spares, why would I ruin something just because I don't want to do it the right way? Um, this is 5 8 takes 5 8 wrench here. Loosen them up. Um, while we're in here, we have an oil leak. 
Duh. Most almost every David Brown I've ever worked on had an oil leak. Um, that's just how they are. You get a 40, 50, 60, 70 year old tractor, they're they're gonna leak. That's just what they do. Not just David Brown's in general. Um, but I'd make jokes about the British stuff leaking because, well, sometimes it does. But uh, any old tractor, even the cases, I mean, most of them have a leak somewhere on them because gaskets weren't designed to last this long. Um, while we're in here, we're going to do rock recover gasket. That should help some of our oil problem. That is probably going to get a hose clamp put on it um, because, again, that is probably leaking some. Um, and Dad just came in and talked to me. He, he was hoping that he was right and he was mostly right that it was a push rod issue um, and he said the reason that they put that vent on there into the rocker cover is if you overfold the power steering fluid it would just go into the crankcase and it wouldn't hurt anything in there and it wouldn't leak everywhere or blow a hose or something on the power steering system pretty cool um, and yes the thermo start has been disconnected and there's some goobered line there um, he verified that that's not at all how that's supposed to be it's supposed to have a steel line there like on the earlier tractors or the thermo start is supposed to be in the middle there um, so we got those loose we are also going to address the valves being that i'm taking this off um you really should and uh it obviously needs done on one of them so we might as well do it on the rest of them i'm gonna wipe this off here real quick and when I set this down in here, I'm going to spin it once it's down in here. And I want to make sure there's not a burr on the top of that lifter. Because if it was hitting on the side of the rim of that lifter, it could uh, could have rolled a burr on it. I mean, it's round, so probably not. Um, but it could have. So we want to make sure that that's not what happened. Um, so I'm going to spin it. And it feels good. It's down in there. It's nested in the hole. I hope it just popped up. I had it. Some of these are a little tougher to get in the uh, in the top of the lifter than others. Nope. Maybe, maybe we do have a problem. Let's look down in there. As we put this in. I've always had a hard time getting them lined up straight, but once you get them, you get them. They stay. Oop. Hmm. There might be something else going on here. I looked down in there and everything looked okay, but everything might not be okay. Well, that one fell down when I took the, uh, rocker assembly off and uh, there might be more than one thing going on here because that one that one's bent like bent bent um that's a problem but uh that one over there i don't know what's up with it we want wanting to go in its hole i'll try putting it in this hole see if it does what it's supposed to. It wants to not sit on the lifter. These almost feel magnetized. Like they, they want to stick to certain things. And the lifter is never one of them. Okay. It sits in there good. Well, that'll be a first. I'm surprised they didn't notice that right off the bat. It really didn't look like it was sitting much lower. Probably because it was wedged up against the wall. Um, let's see how ba how badly it's been running because of that. I don't see any, uh, you guys probably can't see it. I don't see any big scores or scratches on here. It's a little tiny little bit there. Other than that, I really don't see much. Good enough for us. I've got a parts engine under the bench here that probably has what we need. So, the reason this push rod got bent and the reason I'm going to check all the other ones, because, again, I'm in here. When that slid off, 
the exhaust valve wasn't opening. So you have the combustion, you have all that pressure. Where's it going to go? Out the exhaust valve. What if the exhaust valve doesn't open? Then it builds pressure until it goes to do an in intake again. Then it blows out the intake. So, that push rod wasn't as strong as the pressure that was pushing on the valve and bent it. Now, being it was still puffing out of the intake means it was doing something, but it wasn't very good. Um, it definitely was not doing what it was supposed to be doing. So I'm going to go through and check all the rest of these. And if they've got the tiniest little bend to them, I'm not going to worry about it. But if they're, you know, bent, as in that one was, they're going to get replaced. Another cool thing about the David Browns, another reason I really enjoy working on them. Ooh, there's some stuff in there that's not supposed to be. Don't drop down in there. No. Okay, I got it. Push rods on all these engines from like a 770, 780, 885, um, 1200, 1210 are all the same as an 1194, 1394, 1494. They're all the same. They're all the same push rod. Um, I don't know about 15s and 16s, but I would imagine they're also the same because they're basically just a four-cylinder version of a one of the smaller tractors. That one looks good. Oop, I missed the lifter. Some tractors and engines and such have a really clear, narrow pocket for the lifters to get, or the push rods to go down to the lifters. These have a little more open area in the side that uh, gives you a little more room to not um, put them in the right way. But they've got a lot of other redeeming factors. So after some digging and some digging and some more digging, I got a push rod. They are a little bit different. Um, are they gonna work the same? I don't see why not. If they're the same length, they should work the same. I mean, the ball is a ball on both ends. With a little flat spot and one's a little different shape than the other but again if they were slightly different you could adjust for it and you never even know um, some of the farm walls had like four different push rod length options and it wasn't like one was ten thousands longer than the other it was like a half inch to a three quarters of an inch to an inch i mean i don't remember exactly what it was but I was looking at parts uh, for a Farmall 340 gas um, that I was helping my friend work on. And it's like, check between this serial number and this one, 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 to double check your push rod length. And I'm like, why did you need to change your push rod length throughout the years? I mean, they're the same engine basically the whole way through. Why would you change your push rod length? David Brown knew what they needed and just figured it out, and then they stuck with it. So these... Um, I think came out of either a 770 or an 885, I'm guessing. Um, I suppose they could have come out of a 3800 as well, because we did part one of those out, which are relatively uncommon, even in the States. I don't know about in England. I don't see many pictures of them posted every now and again. Um, every now and again I see one, but, um, we happen to cross one. Carburetor parts are hard to come by for those. They have a downdraft zenith on them, if I do recall. Um, not like that, that has a Solex FV30. Um, whatever the downdraft zenith is, is really hard to find parts for. So uh, we ended up selling motor parts to a guy who needed motor parts, and then we kept the rest of the tractor um, for parts. And we ended up taking the... The hood's actually going to go on my 780 12-speed that I've been working on eventually. So we've got our push rods back in. I'm going to put the rocker arms back in, which are over there. And then we're going to adjust the valves on this. And then this gasket will be the next thing. So I went ahead and loosened all of these uh, nuts back up. 
because we're going to have to readjust them anyway and it's easier to um, set these on here let's say one of these is up um, then you're tightening tightening this bolt down and it's trying to push the valve down and making it not line up and it's just not good one thing to watch out for i had this happen on an 880 i was rebuilding it uh it smoked horrible i mean it didn't start good but it smoked horrible even when it was running it used oil really horrible like you had to put oil in it every time you went to run it even if you ran it for five minutes just the oil just disappeared um you would have thought it was like burning straight oil because of how bad it smoked and it actually had some tar that would stick to the muffler it would come out of the exhaust and roll down the side of the muffler and down over the generator and the power steering pump and all that stuff it was just this sticky black goo and we couldn't figure it out couldn't figure it out and finally i decided to do an in-frame rebuild on it this screw right here backed out and was sitting oh right about there luckily it didn't fall down in one of those lifter holes or it would have been really bad um and this is your screw that adjusts how much oil there's a little oil passage that comes up underneath this block into here and then it all those little holes or weep holes where it pressurizes oil inside this rocker shaft and it sprays it kind of or dribbles it whatever it does up out of these holes and it gets it down um, it also has a hole on the inside that drips it on this shaft here so your rockers are well lubricated um, that screw backed out so the rockers not only weren't getting a ton of lubrication but it was filling the rocker cover mostly full of oil it wasn't clear full because it wasn't running out of the breather but i'm surprised it wasn't and what it was doing is every time it would open an exhaust valve it would actually kind of suck it down beside the uh, in the valve guide down in and it would blow it out the exhaust manifold and then when the intakes open it would suck it down in the intake valve and then burn it so then you had all kinds of oil going places it shouldn't go so watch that when you're working on stuff just make sure that isn't backed out i believe they take a punch and smack around them so they don't back out but somebody must have tried taking it apart the wrong way at some point and didn't put it back together right on that one so the next thing you're going to need is feeler gauges or shim stock um are the two ways i have done um setting valve lash or uh adjusting valves um sure there's other things you could use um on that actually i had to use some little flats of copper i had because the rockers were wore so bad on it that i couldn't get my wide feeler gauges in there because they're like a half inch wide almost maybe they're three eighths but i needed like an eighth inch wide piece or a little bigger to get in there where it was wore and i ended up taking my micrometers checking some copper little shims I had in my box from something and cutting them because I didn't want to cut my feeler gauges into a shape that would get in there and using my micrometer I could measure them and know how big they are how big they were to uh, get the appropriate stack of them to check it wasn't an I was ideal no did it work yeah does it run yeah it runs pretty good um, but I have feeler gauges so we're gonna do that so if you guys are working on one of these, and you can at all possible, get one of these manu uh, manuals. They've got all kinds of information on how to work on things. Um, this one fits all those different models of keys tractors, um, narrow hood, wide hood, uh, different David Browns, and the 885 is the same motor as this one, so we're going to go with that. 780, 880, and 770 are very similar. They were a little earlier. Um, for the most part, so um, we're going to go with the 885 because that would be the most up-to-date um, that we have in this manual. Um, so that's case stuff. We're not in that. And we're going to go to the right page here. There we are. Three-cylinder three engines. Adjust valve gap. Tap it clearance. With engine cold on all models and set valve gap to 10 thousandths of an inch for all valves. To adjust valves, proceed as follows. Turn engine so the timing peg will fall through into indentation in flywheel through the top dead center hole in transmission or flywheel housing. If number one cylinder is on compression stroke, adjust both intake. Okay, you get that. 
pause the video if you need to see that. Um, I don't go by that. I don't know that the 1194 has a top dead center hole in it. I know some of the tractors, they discontinued that on, but I can go through and figure out um, which ones I can do and which ones I can't. Um, but they give you a little diagram there showing you what you need to do. And these are real good about showing you diagrams and things. We'll flip to some other pages here. I mean, exploded view of transmission, that's good to have. Um, you know, oil filter, putting seals in, uh, crankshaft weights. I mean, good stuff. Um, hydraulic stuff, clutch power shift stuff. I mean, they're, they're pretty, uh, pretty in-depth front axle stuff and they got they got what you need in these um, the head torque sequence all that uh, you've seen me use this in my 780 video I use it on other projects too so if you're gonna ask me questions get yourself a book because the books got all the answers and they explain it better than I can I can look at the side here and say which push rod is up um, the third one's up, and the sixth one is up, it looks like. So what I can do, I can tighten this down. Until we're close. And then the way these are supposed to work is, um, it appears this one didn't have that done to it. And that's why it popped out and caused us all this trouble is uh, you're supposed to tighten the screw against the nut. Um, the phrases I've heard it called is like jack nutting or um, uh, like nut binding where you take and tighten one nut up against another nut or um, use a nut to push against a screw to, uh, I've seen it used to extract like studs out of stuff too. So there's our ten thousandths. Get a wrench on there. I'm happy with the way it feels. Tighten this guy down a little bit. Check the gauge. It's a little tighter than I want. So you use the screw to set it on these. I don't know. I haven't worked on a ton of things outside of cases and David Browns. I've, I've done a little bit of work on some farmalls, but nothing too major yet. Um, a little bit of hesitation there. Oop. We're unloading corn out of the dryer now. That's what the lights flickering was about. And all the noise. So you hold the screw and you tighten the nut up. And then you want to hold like you're trying to loosen the screw while you tighten the nut. And then you want to go through, pull your field gauge back out, swing it in there, double check that you've got tension. And then I like to give it a little feel with my fingers. And eventually, you can walk up to an engine, open it up, and feel if something's out of whack. Yeah, you might feel, you know, 10 thousandths versus 12 thousandths. Yeah, that's not going to be a big deal for the motor running, but we had a Case 300 we were working on. Some of the valves had no clearance. It was actually holding the valves open constantly. And some of the valves had 60 thousandths or more. We started stacking feeler gauges. So I'm going to go through and do the rest of these. And uh, we'll get back to you on the putting it back together. Also, I stand corrected. There's the serial tag. There's the top dead center spot. These have a little bit different cover than some of the earlier tractors. That's why I was thinking it wasn't there. It's not that it's not there. It's just in a little bit different spot. Well guys, we got push rods back in it. We got the valves properly adjusted and we've got bigger problems soon to be continued.